Welcome to Punish for Protecting live Facebook broadcast, everybody. Uh, bear with us as we're getting ready. Just uh, join on and invite your friends list. We'll be with you momentarily. Very, very powerful piece today, guys. So definitely invite all your friends lists. Don't leave anybody out. Don't leave anybody out. Go ahead and invite, 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 invite. Because we got some good stuff happening today. Good stuff. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Whoa, sorry about that. I got background noise. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay, so welcome everybody. Thanks for joining. I wanted to wait for David Jose to be done before I went live. I've got a lot of uh, a lot of things I want to talk about today. Um, I'm calling this the humanitarian humanitarianism deception, uh, and it's going to get good, guys. So go ahead and invite your friends lists. Excuse me while I just kind of set this up. I just need to find something on my laptop that I want to read you. And I uh, thank you guys for joining and inviting. Oh my goodness. Thank you for joining and inviting your friends list. Hi, everybody. I see you guys on. Welcome. I just want to let everybody know, right, first first of all, that this is this is being aired uh, live from Facebook, uh, but it will be re-premiered on YouTube. So hi to everyone on YouTube as well. Thank you so much, guys. I went back five and six months yesterday. I'm still going through them because I have um, comments that many of you have left. I couldn't even believe how many there were. Uh, comments on the YouTube channel and YouTube guys if you're not aware is punished for the number four protecting on YouTube so go ahead and uh, don't forget to, to like subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss out on what we are doing what we are doing so you're welcome Jody you're welcome thank you for being here uh, thank you for inviting your friends list this is a this is gonna be a very powerful live today in which I am very excited about. Um, but if you guys just kind of bear with me, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and invite your friends list on. Uh, I will put in comments uh, uh, links that you can subscribe to YouTube. I will put uh, the links to the... Um, I will put the links to... And apologize for the beeps and stuff. I will put the links to... Um, to uh, the website, which is punished, the number four, beingaparent.com. Many times people are asking me for for, for contact information, uh, so I will make sure that that's on here. Generally speaking, on this page right here, uh, my, my page, Francesca Amato, you can scroll through, and generally you will find links if you need a consultation, if you need help. We are always here, but I'm, I'm appreciating you guys being on right now because it's a very powerful word. I have been, since we've been in quarantine, I know that God is using all things and he's working all things together for our good and his glory and the powerful things that he's doing. And so I've had more time, even though I'm still busy, to pray. And every single day I just get, he just fills me up with a new word to bring forth to you guys. And it's exciting to watch. You know, it's really exciting to watch because, um, to watch how God moves and how God has gifted all of us with different and various types of gifts that he uses. Um, and in my particular area of gifting, I, I'm not saying that I'm a prophet. That's not what I'm saying. I do not believe I, 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 I operate in that. And I don't believe that a lot of people that say they are even operate in that. But I believe that we all have prophetic gifting and prophetic utterance. The scriptures talk about that. But I do believe that I have a gift in that area uh, because I've, I've had things happen throughout my lifetime whereby he'll give me a word, I'll speak it, and it happens like it happens very quickly too. 
Now, I so I really want to share what he gives me every day. Um, I want to I want to read. I'm going to read out loud the prayer that I put on Facebook this morning, so that we can all come together and do this together corporately. I want to be able to go over some things that I talked about the other day, uh, because you know the way I see it. And guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My sister Tony said you do because I've seen. Um, so welcome and please invite your friends list. I don't want anybody. To miss out. Hang on, my my link just went off. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for that. Okay, so um, so so definitely stay on here because this is very powerfully and uh, encouraging to everybody watching. Um, because people are confused out there. God is not the author of confusion. And I see Christians that I want to bring correction to. Take what I say before God yourself, before the Bible yourself. Okay, I'm going to read off scriptures today. That's what I'm going to do. And, and check it for yourself. Check it for yourself. Um, but bring on everybody. I'm going to wait for people to join because I know that it's, it's uh, uh, you know, Facebook has messed with me quite a while. Um, and we're getting things back on track again. And then they try to mess with me. And you guys know why. But um, I, I want to go over this because, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, it, I know that I talk to a different audience. I talk to a variety of different kinds of people, strong believers in God, people who hate God, people who are atheist, you know, people who are really good, have really strong moral compasses. And I believe God's hand is on them. And uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, all different kinds of people, people who are upset with God, people who are mad at God, all different you know kinds of people. So I, I want to be able to reach all of you. And I believe he's given me just a very plain language to talk to people that's non-religious, that's non-churchy, um, so that everybody can understand. And I'm just a regular person. I really do believe I keep short accounts with the Lord. I, I highly reverence and respect God. Um, uh, I'm not perfect, but I keep very short accounts, okay? And I believe that God has his favor and his hand upon me, um, not for anything that I have done, but because of my my, my abiding faith in him. And, um, and, and you know, like anybody else, and because of the things I witness and the things that I'm so deeply involved in, so, so passionate about, uh, with this industry that we are we, we've been exposing uh, and please this is for all people so stay on don't get off because I promise you this is going to be something that you've been wanting to hear need to hear um, and maybe been asking yourself and now you're going to get some answers today so uh, so the reason I'm saying this is that uh, God does speak through his people he's done it from the beginning of time and he always will it says my sheep hear my voice and they will uh, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and they will not follow the voice of the stranger. And the Bible also says that, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that we would flee from the voice of the stranger. Okay, so that's an important thing that you should you should do in your own life is flee from the voice of the stranger and listen to the voice of, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now if you don't, if you're not a Christian, this is for you too. So please watch because I've got some really good stuff. Um, but I want to, before I go into this whole prayer, because I'm trying to actually pull it up on Facebook, I want to be able to share with you guys, um, and, and all the advocates, the frontline advocates, uh, I would really love to see them in agreement with me when I pray. So I'm not going to pray until some of you can help me get the very important advocates that I really want on here, like David Jose, Robert is driving right now, um, Lazaro, if somebody could grab him for me, uh, Brianna Segdal, uh, very important people who I know are very anointed by God. Um, uh, uh, gosh, I don't want to put Austin Bennett. I would love for them to, if they don't get on now and pray with me now, uh, if they would kindly, you know, just watch this after so that they too can be in agreement. All the families that are watching, all the families that are watching, um, all the families that I, that I, that I work with and so on, that you guys, um, definitely join in prayer. When we, when we come together in prayer in one heart, um, one voice, powerful, powerful things happen. When you have a prophetic calling, your words are, are really, really, uh, um, um, it's like the power of God, the fire of God is behind them and it pushes them, it catapults them out. And so even the new age explains this and there's, there's sp specific types of laws, right? We know that if, that if you jump off a, of a cliff, you're going to go down. You're not going to go up, right? Unless you have some kind of gear on, but you're going to go down. These are specific laws. That's why people talk about the law of attraction in which I do believe in. Um, it's scripturally sound in, in so many ways. Uh, a lot of times the church it, it hides from things that even the new age has brought out that the new age is actually really more right on about than the church has been because the church tends to be afraid of everything and think everything is the devil when God created everything and the devil counterfeit stuff. So I, I, I bring all this forward because uh, there's certain laws that God has put into place that will always work no matter what they're always going to work. 
So I thank you guys for sharing. I thank you guys for moving this on. Um, and I'm going to read that prayer. Um, but I also want to say that uh, it is important that you guys understand the humanitarian deception. And Christians should really understand the humanitarian deception and how it's operated and how it operates in these big uh, businesses. But what I want to tell you today is that these big businesses, it, they, they are huge. I'm going to tell you, I've been a part of all these court systems and I see how evil they are and how they're related to the bar association. They're related to, uh, they're related to the family court. You'll see a lot of the buildings today, their family court and CPS and, and, and so, so department of social services are all connected together. It is one very, very, very wicked, wicked, wicked system. So what do we do as Christians? We unite in prayer and we fight them. We have to take away this deception that has been taught upon the churches for so long. Listen, I grew up in church, so I know. And God told me to come out from them so that I could get cleaned out and so that my thinking would be clear and pure and understand what he's really saying and not what some man at the pulpit is saying that may be very well-meaning, but not teaching the proper message. One of the messages that that the that they've taught is the one particular scripture that says that we're supposed to um we're supposed to listen to all the uh the governing authority as if God actually anointed and appointed them to be there. That is one of the biggest biz biggest deceptions that that probably has ever been taught uh, in the Christian body because it's very contra contradictory to what Paul did and what uh, all so many other scriptures that I'm going to read to you s actually say. The government is on his shoulders. The governing body that is over the believers and the body of Christ is the head, which is uh, God, okay? Which is Yeshua, which is God. I'm sorry, which is God. Okay, I'm sorry. And so... How can he say one thing and then a demonic person say another and us be in agreement with both? If that is not utter confusion, I don't know what is. And this is why, and this is one of the reasons why I do believe that the church has fallen asleep deeply into almost like a coma, okay? And they do not know how to fight warfare, intercessory warfare, okay? And this is not my comfort zone to do this uh, publicly among so many different various types of... <laughs> Okay, non-believers and, and so on and so forth, but I'm going to do this anyway because I feel strongly led to do it. But it's not my comfort zone. Normally when I've done this type of thing, it's been amongst massive believers. I've done this with global ministries, uh, intercessory prayer and so on, prophetic words. And now he's telling me to do it this way with my particular audience that he that he's built up in this past few years. And also he said he's going to be bringing in lots and lots and more. Okay, so... Um, so my, so the reason I'm, 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 I'm going to share this with you is because the church has been deeply asleep and deeply like in a coma. And even those that are gifted are in asleep. It, it, the Bible says that those that are gifted, it says, even the elect shall be deceived if that's possible. And I see the deception on these people because he has shown me so clearly what's really going on in the world, in the church, and there's deception on both sides. And sadly, in a lot of the world, there's more eyes open than there are in the church. And that's really sad. So I believe what he's about to do is he's about to wake people up right now. So do you want to be awake? Then ask God to just clean anything out of you, anything out of us that is deception, that we think is him, that is not him. So I'm going to read you so many scriptures today that prove from Old Testament to New Testament that God does does not say to pray mercy for those that are carrying the antichrist spirit that are sexually abusing children. He absolutely does not say that. And then there's not a prophet, not a prophetic person that would ever speak that unless they were deceived. Okay. And I'm saying it clearly. They're deceived. Okay. Because he does not say that. Now he's given us time to warn them and warn them. We have done. We have warned them in the natural. We have warned them in the spirit. We have warned them in the church. We have warned them out of the church and, and, you, and you know who clearly has gotten harder and harder and harder and more wicked and more wicked. So in the days past, I have actually discussed and shown you so many different places from the Old and New Testament where uh, God has used particular men and women to destroy evil people, especially evil people that were governmental. When I say governmental, what do I mean by that? Governmental, that they were literally um, heads of things and they were in positions of power and they were harming and destroying people. 
Okay, children and adults and more people should be watching this right now, but the enemy doesn't want this out. I normally get a hundred viewers at a time. So can you guys start making sure that you start spreading this out and, and get and inviting your own friends list to bring on here. Okay, because this is such a powerful word and this is to help people and this is something that is for the for now. Okay. And yes, of course I'm going to I'm going to bring out the family court situation, but that touches every single one of you. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Okay. It touches every life everybody from in the womb to the tomb that 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 evil organization touches everybody it is connected to who world health organization it is connected to cps child predator services it is connected to family court family court is all of this is seriously seriously connected okay very 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 much connected all of it all of it connected and i've been showing you this for how long and david jose has been showing you this for how long so 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 okay so why do we go after? Why do we go after all of this? Why do we expose all of this? Why do we, why do we, uh, why are we, um, uh, ha why is God saying now, you know, pray, now speak it out into the atmosphere, now go after it, now, now teach these people, you know, now bring them in because he knew what was about to happen. People are either getting the wrong messages about the, the pandemic. They're, they're giving wrong messages about the pandemic. They're afraid. They're operating in fear. They're not listening. They're not understanding. They're not, they're not doing, they're, they're, they're just going off into places that are natural, that are fleshy, and that are not actually what the Spirit of God is actually saying. So well, haven't we all prayed for God to take the system down? Haven't we all prayed for God to, to stop these evil organizations? And yes, it's huge, but compared to God, it's very, very small, and he is in charge. Um, he, they, that's a false judge. It's a false judgment when God is the true and one true God, the one true judge. So haven't we, so now God is moving things and he's doing something. He's actually doing something on a global level and people are trying to pray it away. And I've been out here saying, don't pray it away. It's just like when God said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. He said that because Peter tried to pray away what in, in his own, probably in his own innocence to a degree, right? In his own well meaning meaningness Peter tried to 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 stop what God was doing okay and that's what a lot of people are doing now even with the money being transferred all over the place okay and the stimulus and this and that the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just and there's going to be a major financial shift why would you pray that away let him keep doing what he's doing. The system that is money is a failure. It is wicked on this earth, okay? And it is not in heaven, but God uses it here. And it's a multi, you know, sometimes I, one time I said it was a multi-billion dollar industry. Then I said, nope, it's an actually multi-trillion dollar industry. And more likely it's probably a multi-zillion dollar industry, okay? And you can't take down, I mean, by the power of God, you can take down anything without a penny, okay? David did it with a rock and a slingshot. Okay, but obviously in, in practical terms, you cannot take down, you cannot take down the system with, uh, without what he plans to do and how he plans to do it. Let him move. And what I want to tell you is ask God to clean out your mindset of what you've been taught so that you can hear the truth and don't even take my word for it. <laughs> so that you can hear the truth and that you can, um, that you can uh, activate in your own lives, individually, in your own families, and corporately, what God wants to do. Now, God uses people. He's always used people, and he said that he was going to go and leave us a comforter, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. But he also said that we, he was going to, uh, he was going to um, uh, have, uh, you know, work through us. <laughs> This is a bad time, whoever's calling, and I'm not answering phone calls at this time. I'm not. I will call you back. Okay, so um, this is, so, okay, so humanitarianism. Humanitarianism is a very demonic thing. Wow, shocking. How can you say that being a humanitarian is a, is a good thing? Because it's come under this deceptive cloaking, this lie, like everything else, Okay, that it's here to help you. It's here to help the abused woman. No, it's not. It's here to help the abused child. No, it's not. I've heard so many people go, well, during this pandemic, what are we going to do when there's abuse happening in the house? Well, let me ask you guys something, because I've been doing this for close to 13 years. What have we done now? When you call the police, they, they refer it back to the family court who does nothing, who actually exasperates the situation and abuses the children and the families more. And that includes men who are abused too. 
um, when when you uh, when you contact when you go through the family court system, as you know, they harm they harm worse they harm far worse than anything. Okay, and they and then these uh, these police officers, and I'm not saying all police officers are bad, but there's a lot that are. There's no question, and let's not be blind and live under a rock. Okay. Um, but everybody's capable of having evil inside of them, okay? So wake up, okay? Enough of this nonsense that I bleed blue. I bleed red, okay? I bleed red. And Jesus Christ bled red, not blue. So there's a lot of problems that we have in society, okay? And most of them are in positions of pseudo-authority. Pseudo-authority. God is going to take down and destroy all the uh, political parties. That's coming down, okay? Um, so... So with the, with the police, the police do not protect the families. They do not, even the most well-meaning, innocent, nicest cop does not protect the families because he's a puppet to the system. And then the others that are already corrupt and their hand is in all the money schemes and stuff, they certainly aren't going to help you. And I know that everybody that's watching this has already suffered in that manner. It doesn't matter if you're white or black. It doesn't matter. Okay. And definitely black people get worse of it. No question. Cause I've seen it and witnessed it with my own eyes. Okay. But these people are evil. All right. And God is not praying mercy for them. Um, so humanitarianism, like coming to your house and what are we going to do about people that are suffering? Well, you call the police then. You call the police then and leave the freaking family court out of it. You call the police. You videotape the abuser. You do whatever you have to do. You get out. OK, as best as you can. You call loved ones. You don't isolate. You don't let them isolate you. OK, you do these specific things. You call advocates and you do what you have to do in those in these cases. But don't, the family court shutting down, which it will shut down completely, the axe to the root of the family demonic court. OK, and it will shut down completely. And so will CPS and all of it. All of their funds will dry up. I don't care how many quadrillion they have. They will all dry up because we've spoken it out and we've come in agreement that that is a demonic system. And the church needs to repent. Here we go to the church. The church needs to repent of not helping the widows and the orphans and the we need to forgive them and they need to repent for not helping the widows and the orphans like the bible says for turning it over to government turning the our power and our authority over to government while you see pastors becoming multi quadrillionaires and god wants us blessed okay but not feeding the poor and not feeding the widows and the orphans and not protecting its own and giving that over to the welfare department. That is that needs to be repented of. And if you're a part of the welfare department and you needed it for a short time, get the hell off that stuff. Ask God to forgive you and ask God to provide for you any way else but that way. Okay, come out from that system. That system is a big problem. And that position was supposed to be to the church, not to the government. And this is why we have so many problems and you need to start getting out and you're going to be in a very uncomfortable place. You're going to be out of a, in a very uncomfortable place. And it's going to, you're in a time right now where you are going to either believe in God and trust him for everything you have or don't have, or you're not, but you need to make that decision. I hear, I, I'm telling you, you, you that is watching or will watch need to make that decision. You need to be prepared for this. You need to make this decision. There is a shaking and a shift going on, and it's going to keep on going on because the hearts of man is not changed. So this pandemic, whether it be fake or real, and I'm telling you, I know people that died from whatever it is that they're doing, whether it is what they're calling it or something else. I have a nurse that's going to be coming on, and I know that they're doing a lot of scamming, a lot of they're, 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 they're fudging the death toll. They're fudging the death, uh, the deaths. They're calling it all Corona. There is all this other evil stuff going on, but it's okay. My point is, is that we, listen, the point is, is that you can't, don't tell God to stop doing what he's actually doing. Okay. I hope you're hearing this message by your spiritual ears and not just your, your the ears that God put here, your spiritual ears that you're hearing what I'm saying. Okay. There are evil, wicked people. There are evil attorneys that are harming children that ignore abuse. There are evil attorneys that intentionally, uh, re that you retain and you pay exorbitant amounts of money. You've given them everything, houses, you've given them your lives, your blood, your flesh, your kids, and your money and everything you've ever worked for to these scumbags. I can say that, right? And now that God is shaking, let him shake. Sadly, we are getting shaken with them. And that's okay. That's okay. Because that's what he does. First the church, then the world. First the church, then the world. Okay? 
So now, now, remember I kept saying and other, I've heard others say it. I said it though. I said it without looking at them. I said it because I was, I heard it. 20, 2020 is a year of 2020 perfect vision, perfect vision. We're in it now. And it's becoming more and more perfect because there's people that have never been touched by this or actually have been, but didn't know they were. And now they're seeing it like church is being shut down when it's separation of church and state, another misinterpretation which means that the church is separate from the world, which means the world, the political things don't have any authority over the church, not the other way around. And those of you that sold your souls out to a 501c3 church and you can't give the full message anymore because you sold your soul, that's done in fear. You need to repent of that. J joining the welfare system, you need to repent of that. Selling your souls to foster care, you need to repent of that. Unless God really called you to, to take those children, to protect them in the interim and bring them back home to their families, then you were not called by God to do that because you cannot join hands with the devil, period. Repent of it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. These are where our problems stem from. The more we took, we went away from God, the more his hand lifted off of us and the more trouble we all endured. And the innocent endure it. And the innocent endure it. Do you understand what I'm saying? The innocent endure the same problems. So we all need to ask God to forgive us. We all need to. But when it comes to those that are antichrist, the antichrist spirit, the Comos and the family court judges and the family court guardian items and the social workers that are not, I know good ones, I know great ones, but the social workers that are wicked, that work for CPS and all that stuff, let it shake, let it shake because it's going to shake it down. There is no hiding place for these people. They know who they are. When they watch me, they know that I'm right because they're shaking in their boots. And they know. And they know. They absolutely know that what I'm saying is true. What I'm saying is absolutely true. Okay, now I'm going to read this prayer. I'm going to read this prayer. Okay, I'm going to read it out loud for you guys to join. And I'm going to ask you guys in comments, in comments... That's right. That's right, Natalie, because they can't repent anymore. They're not they they have the they they have the antichrist spirit. I'm going to read scripture that's going to clearly state. So there's balance. Synoptically, you have to read the Bible. Okay? Synoptically, he's not how can he be a fair and just God if he's like this? Or if he's qu crazy, if he's confusing, if he's giving two different messages. Okay? It's not about that. It's time to wake up. Don't listen to prophets that tell you to pray mercy on the wicked, wicked ones that are antichrist, that are sexually abusing children. Come on now. We've given, he's given time to repent. He gave Jezebel time to repent. Ahab time to repent. But I'm telling you right now that that time is over. Take, I'm ta telling you. So I wrote this today and I'm asking you guys to join me. Ignite your faith with me. I speak it out if you can as well. I want all the names of the wicked ones in the comments so we can speak them out as well. Okay, we turn this over to God Almighty through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, those of us that are believers. Okay, and of course, now because somebody wrote me, I just lost my place. So give me a minute. I'm going to pull it back up again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get 85 million thousand messages, and I, that's why I know that 29 is not all that's watching right now. I know what goes on with this freaking censorship nonsense. Okay. And this is about numbers because more and more and more people need to hear this message. It's very important. It's not about me, okay? I put myself out there, okay? I put myself out there because of my belief, okay? And because of what I see and what I know that's happening and that's been happening and the children that I'm praying for and the children that I'm, that I, that I, you know, that God has had me praying for and helping families. So, okay, just give me a minute. I'm almost there. I'm going to pull this up. Okay, Governor Como, very, very tied to who? World Health Organization. I've been telling you guys. I've been trying to tell you guys. The reason why he, he this was such a setup, pre, prepared setup, okay? Pre, 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 it's done. They did this so, so way before you guys knew about this, even before Wuhan, China. This is, this is connected. This is so connected, okay? He's known about this. He's wicked, guys. He's wicked. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's a warlock, okay? If you want to know, he's a warlock. Okay, so... Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. I got it now. People. Okay. So basically, um, he's known about this way before. That's why he started pulling everybody out of jails and prisons from, from gang, New York gang members to, and this is not just about New York, all over the world I'm praying. Over the country I, 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 is where I advocate. But he pulled them out. He pulled out homicidal murderers. He pulled out uh, all kinds of pedophiles way before his second or uh, third uh, term. 
Okay? I mean, this is complete wickedness. Complete wickedness. Okay. So I said, uh, pray with me and speak it out into the atmosphere in agreement. We pray against the evil governors, the judges, the politicians, the doctors. I'm not talking about all doctors. The wicked ones know who they are and God knows who to go after. Okay? So relax. Child abusers, child molesters, child traffickers, CPS, anyone who gets a paycheck in this deeply rooted system, anyone who's turned a blind eye, human rights commissioners, human rights commission members, and anyone with any authority that ignored abuse to families, district attorneys, attorney generals, police, again, good and bad, police, all forms of authority that ignored the cries of the people. We command a dead stop to their finances. Contro and we command a dead stop to control of any kind. In the name of Jesus, we pray this right now. Your authority is now blocked. Your buildings will fall. Your communications will be like the Tower of Babel. And your, communi and your computer systems will burn out. There will be electrical shortages throughout the computer systems of these organizations. Um, and the same measure that you met us will be met back to you. Decades of being told, decades, decades of not only ignoring, but making matters worse. This includes the FBI and the Department of Justice and any high or low position of power. Sheriffs that ignored the people and refused to arrest and stop the judges and others who perpetuated these crimes and abuses, attorney generals, commissioners, judicial authorities, county executives that oversee and covered up, especially when they worked with committees. A line is now drawn in the sand and you can no longer take another step. Child attorneys and gals, guardian litems, and any position that harmed children and stole true authority, usurped our authority, any position. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. From that, that stole from sacred, true authority, God-given authority that touched it. Sudden destruction shall fall upon you, and you guys can name them below. I'll try to read them since I'm not driving. Exodus, so that's Old Testament, 32.10. Now leave me alone. This is God speaking. Now leave me alone. Me, capital M. Now leave me alone, he said, so that my anger may burn against them and consume them. And then I will make you a great nation. Not Trump. Not Como. Not any of these people. Not these mere men that put pants on, okay? That don't sit, uh, sit on the throne. But God himself will make you a great nation. So he says, leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and consume them and consume them. He didn't say, I'm going to pray mercy on them. My people go pray mercy for them. He didn't say that. Psalm 66, 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. The Lord would not have listened. It says he, there's, it's, your, your prayers are like brass to him. You can't get to him. Jeremiah 7, 16. Jeremiah, the prophet. As for you, do not pray for these people. Did you hear what I just said? As for you, do not pray for these people. Do not offer a plea or petition on their behalf. And do not beg me, again, capital M, God, for I will not listen to you. Hello, would you like me to read that again? For those Christians out there that think that we're supposed to pray mercy for these antichrist, evil, wicked, demonic, evil people. Let me read that again for you. Jeremiah 716. Wesley, stop. As for you, do not pray for these people. Do not offer a plea or petition on their behalf. And do not beg me, God, for I will not listen to you. Pretty simple. Jeremiah 11.11. 11, and 11.11 11 is justice. I love it. Justice. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Okay? Not what Trump says. Not what Como says. Not what some well-meaning Christian says. Not what an atheist says. This is what the Lord says. I am about to bring upon them a disaster they cannot escape. Woo! Want me to say it again? Okay, I will. I am about to bring upon them a disaster that they cannot escape. They will cry out to me, but I will not listen to them. Okay, do you need more? I'll give you more. I'll give you more. I'll give you more. 
Jeremiah 14, 11, Then the Lord said to me, Do not pray for the well-being of this people. Hosea 5, 6, They go with their flocks and their herds to seek the Lord, but they do not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. Okay? Zechariah, Zechariah 7, 13, Therefore, just as I had called, and they would not listen, how many times have we told them? How many times have the people cried out? How many times have the people begged for their children? How many times have the people said, my child's being molested, my child's being abused, and they hurt them even further and more? How many times has a person been on a stand and admitted to abuse, and the child attorney stands up and takes the side of that evil person? Or the judge hurts the mother or father that's trying to protect the children? Do you think that a loving God is going to keep letting this go on in this day and age? No. First, he brings mercy. First, he brings grace. First, he brings it, and he brings long suffering. Suffering. He brings all of that stuff because he's fair and he's just. But then comes a time, and I'm telling you, and it, two years ago when I spoke it, he still gave two years worth of more mercy because how, how, how full of grace he is. But he's also the God of judgment. He's also the God of judgment, justice, judgment, okay? He puts it all out there, and they did not listen. And we know very well that they did not listen because I watched that inside their own buildings. And I see it every day in every single state in our nation. It's the same demon spirit sitting inside every judge I've ever seen. Okay? And it no longer shocks me. And that's sad. And I see these CPS workers and their lies and what they do while children are suffering beyond repair. And do you think a loving God is going to continue to let this happen? No. But he needs people. Because that's what he says. He needs us to come in agreement and to speak it out and to take authority and not be deceived and not listen to even church pastors that tell you to pray mercy for them or church pastors to say, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. No, no, you have to understand all the scriptures and the timing and the, and the, and the, and the personal relationship with God and all of that. There's a lot of factors that come in that bring us to this time right here where David will take that slingshot, pull it back and hit that giant in the head and take his head off. There comes that time. Okay. There comes the time where God says, I've warned the Pharaoh and I sent Moses and I sent Moses and I sent and sent and sent. And then I did a, and then I did plagues and frogs and this and that. And now, I will swallow them up and the Red Sea is parted at this moment and I will swallow them up and kill every last one of them. Okay. And my people can be free. Okay. That's what God is. That's the time we're in right now. Not to pray mercy for antichrist people. He, the Bible says that the evil men, not demons, will wax worse and worse, wax worse and worse. Okay. And their hearts are hardened. If they have anything in them that's human, they will not stay there. No, no human, whether you're saved or not, can stay getting a paycheck from this wickedness, laughing at the people that are suffering in your own country that you claim you want to protect like Como. You want to protect, but how come every time all these families begged for help, you were appointing these sickos and protecting them? You liar. And now you have this whole pandemic that you lied about from the beginning because you set it up with the forced vaccination and the segregation of children and you started pulling our kids out. Now, God, shut your schools down. God, shut your schools down. Okay. Then you did the, then you did the, uh, the taking out all the prisoners, all the real criminals, innocent families. I go into the jails and I visit and they, and they're in there and the, and the, and the sick, sickos and the wicked ones are out in our streets because Como and other governors like him, like the one in California. Okay. And, and believe me, this runs deep and it runs high all the way to the president. I, 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 and, and, and I know that some of you don't like that, but I know a lot of stuff that's going on for real. And I'll leave it at that. But the president just endorsed 5G and, and 6G. Okay? I'm glad he went. he's going after who. But you got to understand, when you're in the middle of this stuff and he is being attacked, and I defend all the attacks that, that come against him that I don't agree with, okay? But there is still stuff that he too needs to come out of. He needs to come out of. Our president needs to come out of wickedness too okay he's come out of a lot but not all of it and he hasn't given back the people their authority okay and it's our authority you guys are still looking for a king to protect you the bible says not to you guys are still looking the scripture is very clear not to appoint a king over us i don't care who he is i don't care what church t told you that that's the man that god called it's possible he did call trump but he needs to come fully into alignment and agreement and i'm not going to say god didn't because i haven't heard that one way or the other to be honest with you but i do see the wrong things 
I do see the wicked things. And I do see that the authority belongs to us, not him, not the governors, not the politicians, not the legislators, not the assembly, not Congress. It belongs to us, the people. When are you going to take it back, my friends? When are you going to take it back? And use this time inside our homes with the blood on our doors right now to get into heavy-duty prayer, heavy-duty repentance. Tell your neighbor, love your neighbor like yourself, okay? And listen very, very careful. And if you didn't, if you missed this from the beginning, go back and listen. He said in Zechariah 7, 13, therefore, just as I called and they would not listen. So when they call, I will not listen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Therefore, just as I called and they would not listen. So when they call, I will not listen, says the Lord of hosts, says the Lord of hosts. So we have a country that has run so far from God that I sat in courtrooms and watched them. I watched them throughout the years. God put me in a courtroom throughout the years, way before you knew me. I was in a courtroom. Why am I here? Before I knew this. And I watched them scrape in God we trust off the back of a judge, behind the judge. I've seen that. This was years ago in New Paltz, New York. Okay. I've seen what, what's happening. I've seen, do you think God, do you want everything to go back to the way it was? Cause I don't, I'd rather suffer for a little more than have, and have freedom than to keep going the way it's been going and be in bondage to the system that we've all been in bondage to. Do you guys understand? You don't even know. Some of you are so asleep. Some of you are in a coma. You're so asleep, no matter how much we tell you every day, no matter how many times David gets on there, Austin Bennett gets on there, I get on there. So many people get on every day telling you, wake the heck up. You're not free until you, until you line up. You're not free until you take your authority. And most of all, you're not free until you wake up, come out from the slumber, come out from the coma and start to, and pray and pray and repent. Okay. And stop praying mercy for these evil ones. Please hear what I'm saying. Stop praying mercy. Take authority over these wicked ones. And that's what we do right now. So those of you that are in agreement, we pray right now for all these evil, these Bill Gates, evil, wicked, antichrist, evil, wicked, wicked, wicked man. And all his tentacles, the family court judges, the CPS workers, the lying attorneys, the lying child attorneys, all these wicked people, all the politicians, all of them, all of them. We pray against this demonic scheme and schisms. We take, we send mass confusion into their ranks. We command a drying up of all their finances. Dry it up. Shift it into the hands of the anointed. Give it to the give wealth of the wicked to the righteous. Okay? And, and wake up the righteous too. And we command right now in the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the blood of Jesus, the, the blood that has all power, all power, we command right now that they are dried up, their finances are dried up, their systems are down, their hierarchies are down, that every eye shall see, that full exposure is, is, is for all to see, all the media, all the media, the lying media, all the lying media, every single last person. And listen, God put a soul in each and every one of these people, whether they sold it or, they, or he owns it, whichever one, he owns them all, okay? That, this, that their consciences will be pricked so strongly by the anointing of this prayer, okay? By the power of agreement of this prayer right now. And that every single devil be bound, and especially that lying spirit, that lying spirit of deception that is over them all, that they look at you like they care. That's humanitarianism deception, and they don't. And they will make your children, they'll put them into abusive situations. They'll sell them. They don't care. And that we command right now, I call forth mighty walls and hedges of protection around those of the, those that are watching and those that will watch that belong to the Lord or that are, or that are called to be joined heir to Christ, mighty walls of protection, supernatural authority, supernatural power. Like you've never known before that you're going to need for this hour that you have wisdom beyond your own years that you have, that, that God just gives you the perfect shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken during this time that you will not operate in fear because that's not of God, that you will only operate in faith and that every single moment your faith will increase even more and more and more and more and more in the name of Jesus, that you will not be deceived by pastors. You will not be deceived by well-meaning people in the church. You will not be deceived by anybody. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus and that you will take the authority that Christ gave and died for and empowered us with. The same power that rose him from the dead, that lives in us, that you will operate and move in that anointing and that power. 
and that every family court judge from New York to California to <laughs> D.C. to Washington to West Virginia to, to, to everywhere, Virginia, every single one of them right now in the name of Jesus will be lassoed by the Holy Spirit and held captive forever and be dealt with harshly for the damages that they've caused upon these families and children. And every single tentacle and every single Bill Gates and every politician, every one of them, every one of them named and unnamed that has been a part of this, that's participated in this child trafficking industry uh, or, or any kind of abuse of any kind, treating people like and putting them in bondage, treating people like we're less than babysitting us when we don't need a babysitter. OK, I command freedom on our country like we've never seen. And I call for the greatest revival the greatest outpouring, the greatest awakening that this world has ever seen. And everybody says, amen. Yes, yes, in a blink of an eye. Amen. Thank you, guys.